subspecie 2, Bloodstone, and subspecie 3, Bloodlust. You can see a pattern here, I'm sure. Uh, were filmed back to back, and are really best watched one right after another, since part 2 doesn't have an ending, and part 3 does. It really just feels like one complete story, parts 2 and 3. And so much better than the first movie. Um, well, comparatively speaking, anyway. It's still not art, but it's a lot more entertaining, a lot more enjoyable than the first film. We get a surprising amount of characterization, which is not something that Full Moon or low-budget horror movies in particular are well known for. Subspecies 2 does start off with something that bugs me, and I'm sure will bug a lot of other people, and has bugged a lot of other people. Laura Tate no longer plays Michelle. They recast the actress as Denise Duff. Denise Duff does a really good job as Michelle, and again, gets a lot more characterization than she did in the first film. But at the very beginning of the movie, which takes place almost immediately after the end of the first movie, she's clearly a different actress, but okay, that's whatever. But she also has long, curly hair instead of the short pixie cut that Laura Tate was rocking just a few hours earlier. So that's kind of, you know, distressing. Stefan, who was not that interesting of a character anyway, is immediately killed uh, by Radu in a really gruesome fashion. It's pretty cool looking, actually. Kind of upsetting if you enjoyed the character, but I don't think anyone really did, so. He then comes after Michelle, she barely gets away, and most of the second film is Michelle uh, fighting against her vampiric urges and Radu <clears throat> Uh, coming after her, getting back in touch with his mother, who is a sorceress mummy. The special effects on her also look pretty cool. Um, and the little subspecies running around in the movie doing his bidding. Again, they're not put to great use, the subspecies. They don't do an awful lot, despite the franchise being named after them, but they're still kind of neat to look at when they do show up. Uh, Michelle's sister and um, a couple of other characters show up in the second and third movie and uh, battle against Radu and his evil mother. The great thing about part two and three, however, uh, is the characterization we get on Radu, who is still played wonderfully by Anna Tovin. Um, in the first movie, he was just doing evil for the sake of being evil. I mean, he killed his dad, to steal this mythic item, the Bloodstone, and he did it just just because. I mean, he, he says it's my birthright, but he doesn't seem to have any actual interest in, you know, ruling. Um, he torments Stefan and the girls because he thought it was fun. He, in the second and third movie, we find out that Radu is sort of childlike in his cruelty. His mother never really gave him a chance to be anything other than a monster um, and an instrument for her to rule all of, I guess, Bucharest. Um, gotta start somewhere. So, w we get really interesting scenes of Radu developing as a character and being kind of sympathetic. He has a really hilarious line in either part two or part three that kind of run together, I can't remember, they're basically one story. He is teaching Michelle how to move through shadows, move as a shadow, and they hear a band play off in the distance, and he tells Michelle to listen. There's a look of disgust on his face after they listen for a moment, and he says, the violin player is a disgrace. And then they go and murder the violin player. But I thought it was a really interesting, Radu has a you know, love of music. We also see him showing some remorse for murdering his half-brother, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, his mother tells him that, you know, love isn't an emotion that he should feel. It's not a necessary emotion. It's, you know, weakness. And Radu seems to go along with it. We get to the end of part three, where Radu is really questioning the things that he's been doing. Well, to a point. And actually feeling kind of bad about it and really wanting to bond with Michelle, albeit in a really horrific way. But still, his mother uh, attempts to 
get rid of Michelle, and Radu stops her in his violent manner and kills her. I'm pretty sure he cuts her head off and throws her in a fire, as you do. Radu then, with the bloodstone artifact in hand, no one left to stand up against him, Michelle in a cage, he sits down on his little throne in his little castle and looks dejected and just says, now I have it all. And that's kind of great. I, I don't necessarily think that he's the most sympathetic or interesting villain in horror movie history, but for a low-budget vampire series, that was pretty cool and definitely something you don't see an awful lot. Michelle and her friends, uh, her sister and their friends, eventually get into the castle, uh, take the bloodstone away from Radu and kill him, which uh, leads to the movie uh, ending with the little subspecies being born of Radu's blood, implying that they are going to resurrect their master for another movie.